there are many myths about Jesus. In these programs, we're talking to some experts who can help us get at the facts behind the myths. Before the stories about Jesus were written, they were passed on by word of mouth. Does this mean that old stories were distorted and new ones were made up? Skeptical scholars often compare it with the game of telephone, where children whisper a complicated message from one to another. In the process, the message is corrupted, and at the end, everyone has a good laugh. But how good is this comparison? The telephone game is used by a number of people to talk about uh, the transmission of the text of the New Testament, and uh, it's, it's a, a ridiculous comparison, frankly. Uh, for one thing, in the telephone game, the purpose of it is to skew the message so you can have a big laugh. And in fact, the message is usually somewhat convoluted right to begin with, difficult to remember, and not something that's easily uh, communicated. If you go back 2,000 years, oral tradition was the way that sacred beliefs, personal family information, tribal and national patriotic traditions were passed along. Education was almost entirely by rote memorization. It was not unusual for Greek school children to have Homer's Iliad or Odyssey or large portions of it committed to memory, or for young Jewish boys to have large parts of the Hebrew scriptures, what Christians call the Old Testament, committed to memory. And it's not that they were passed along being whispered without any checks and balances. They were frequently recited in public in contexts where enough of the other people of a given family or tribe or nation were present who, if a, a serious mistake uh, affecting the content of the story was made at some point by the storyteller, by the reciter of the traditions, the audience had both the right and responsibility to interrupt and, and correct the individual. Uh, secondly, it's all done orally by whispers without repetition. You don't get a chance to say, tell me that a message again. Thirdly, there's a single line of transmission only. And fourthly, you only get to interview the last person in the line of transmission. With the New Testament manuscripts, we're dealing with written documents. We're dealing with documents that are copied multiple times. And even the original text of the New Testament manuscripts would have been copied multiple times. So you've got various streams of transmission, not oral transmission. You've got um, uh, multiple copies, and you can interview the witnesses earlier on in the transmissional stream. So the comparison is uh, really quite silly. It just, it just doesn't work at all. Uh, Ken Bailey, a lifelong uh, American uh, uh, missionary in the Middle East, actually tried that experiment with uh, uh, young adult students in his classes in Beirut in Jerusalem, and it utterly failed. Uh, people were able to remember uh, quite flawlessly and they didn't understand the point of the exercise. So when Bart Ehrman, for example, in his book On Jesus, uses uh, the child's uh, game of telephone as an analogy for ancient oral tradition, it's about the most irrelevant and uh, uh, worthless example that uh, anybody could have chosen. This was an age of great feats of memorization of what was important to people and practice and recall and recitation and chanting to music? Well, I, I, again, I think these claims are, are not what they're cracked up to be. And I, I think the key thing to think about here is at two levels. One is to think about the way in which Jewish culture handled things at an oral level as they passed tradition on so that the issue wasn't how far distant the writing is from the event as it is how did they communicate events and pass them on from generation to generation. And there's a form of orality in the Middle East among people who are rooted in oral culture uh, which is known for retelling the story but retelling it with some variation but where the gist is always consistent in the way the story is told. And uh, this seems to be the kind of thing that's going on in the gospel traditions. You know if you look at sa the same event told in the various Gospels, you'll see some differences in the details, but the core event's fundamentally the same, and it seems to fit this pattern. So we've got a, a process of orality that's at work. We have the apostles who 
seem to have operated as guardians or custodians of this tradition. They would have walked and talked with Jesus. The qualification for being an apostle was someone who was with Jesus from the very beginning. So they really knew him. So there was an oversight to this orality. So that's an important aspect. The myth is that the way the stories about Jesus were passed on invited distortion, like the telephone game. The fact is that the stories weren't whispered. They were performed in public. They weren't just told once. They were repeated over and over again. They were passed on by people who were used to memorizing stories accurately. And the listeners could ask questions to make sure they understood the story right. Comparing this with the telephone game is sheer nonsense. Next time, we'll look at how the discovery of the earliest copy of one of the Bible's accounts supported the historical reliability of these accounts. <laughs>